Hey you, over there. Come here. Don't be shy. I won't hurt you. Come on. It's alright. I entirely lied. This was clearly a bait. Now, as we all know, fighting games are just about who can monkey slam their $200 wide Xbox controller the hardest. But as a non-fighting game fan, it might come as a surprise to you as to how much variety there is when it comes to going banana slammer on that thing and making a combo. And believe me, there's a lot. It might explain why so many people that play fighting games kind of want to take LTG's advice and put their head in a microwave when people say that all fighting games feel the same. It's not just combos that feel different. You've got movement, character designs, resources, blocking systems, systems. Look, fellas, I made a 20 minute video on jumping. Someone else take some of these ideas, please. But I would have expected more of the crowd that can't tell you the difference between King of Fighters and Blazblue to have at least noticed how different they feel in the smallest of combos. Since it's such an integral system in fighting games, I think it's pretty interesting to see how different games handle combos. And it's a shame that there's a perception that they're all just so difficult that they require the time investment of a university degree to learn. So many people never try to understand the many varieties in a universal concept. So where is the difference? in combos. Do all fighting game players just love jerking themselves off in training mode? Are we gonna talk about the definitely not My Little Pony fighting game? Where's the strive review, Leon? Hey, get the fuck out of here! It's ready when it's ready! Well, I'm really only able to answer the first question, and I guess a little bit of the second one, so let's get this journey started, beginning at the dawn of time. 1991. Did you know? Combos were originally a glitch. Kinda. A lot of people attribute combos as a concept to Street Fighter 2, where you can have one button go into the next without having a pause between it and dealing uninterruptible damage. Apparently the team were, quote, completely unaware of their existence before publishing the game. And I wouldn't normally believe a statement like this, after all you could just jump in during playtesting and you'll find out that they're there. But I'm also somewhat inclined to believe it. After all, Street Fighter 1 doesn't have combos, at all. When your opponent is reeling, you can't interact with them no matter how hard your fist creates a hole in their jaw. Whether or not they found out by accident or on purpose, the devs noticed that this feels pretty great to do, or maybe that this just feels tragic. You master the timing to optimize your ability to digitally brutalize someone, and suddenly you're rewarded with nothing. It's like all the build-up of foreplay with the payoff of a kidney stone. So games decided to capitalize on the fact that learning the timing was fun and makes for a more engaging system, notably King of Fighters. These types of combos, where you're both grounded and you have to time your hits, are called links, but the important thing to know is that you can't just link everything together. No matter how hard you try, standing heavy punch is not going to link into standing heavy kick. Not because you're the worst gamer in the world, but the game physically isn't capable of making them two moves combo. That's because for a link to work, you need to have the first move finish its recovery, have your opponent still be in hit stun, and then have enough hit stun left on your opponent to make the second move connect before they're given back control of their character. Since Ryo's standing heavy punch literally can't put anyone enough hit stun for standing heavy kick to connect, the link isn't possible. This type of combo gives satisfaction through tight timing and knowledge of what can and can't be connected. And I hate it. I just can't stand these combos. I fully understand why people like it, but I'm the kind of person who boots up Street Fighter 4 at 15 and tries to go from light to heavy and can't understand why it isn't comboing. It doesn't work with the way that my brain works, and so it sucks and it has no place in the world. But even still, if this was the type of combo that they were talking about earlier, I still don't believe it's a glitch, because it doesn't feel like a bug. It just feels like a natural extension of how a hip works. Also, this feels fucking awful. The part that I likely believe is an oversight in programming is the special cancel, in which you completely void the end lag of one move by cancelling it immediately into your special. Since you can't cancel your normal moves into one another, unless we're talking about lights which cancel into themselves, but you know, just forget that I said that, I can see this being deemed a bug since it acts like an anomaly in the otherwise very simple system that makes Street Fighter 2. Anyway, Street Fighter 2 aged like milk left in a car parked in the desert for a week. Let's go over to its much better successor, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, where they started to nail combat. Here resides, not only one of the greatest defensive mechanics of all time, one of my favorite tiny little B&Bs on the planet. Crouching medium kick, medium shoryu, super art 3. What I love about this combo is not the damage that it does, or the way that it uses meter, positional advantage, none of that nerd shit. I love the fact that when I do it, I feel like I'm cheating. Firstly, going from a normal move to a special cancel, it just feels good. There's a real satisfaction to seeing your character snap from point to point knowing your precision for an input allowed you to do that. In a 2018 talk that Yoko Tara gave about making a world feel free, he talks about how what makes a game provide a sense of freedom is the information that you perceive as a player, and what you expect to be possible. The moment you allow the player to do something that they didn't think would be possible is when they start to feel some freedom. A sense of freedom comes from your ability to 
to act outside of your expectations and then leave you wondering, well, if that's possible, what else can I do? You can create a sense of freedom without necessarily giving the player a large amount of things to do, but by surpassing the expectations of what the player can do in their potential choices. The special cancel is the point where you break your own expectations and start to get a sense of freedom inside of the combat system. You're presented with all of these moves that kind of act independently from one another, but a special cancel allows you to break through the idea of them being separate tools and start having them be different pieces that work together to make for larger opportunities. If what they say is true, and this really was a bug, a big round of applause to whichever staff members decided to not program this out of subsequent games as it really takes a bare bones system and gives it some meat. But that's only one part of what I think makes this combo so legit, it's also the second cancel. So the combo in theory should look like crouching medium kick, forward, down, down forward, medium punch into two quarter circles forward and any of the kicks. The two quarter circles forward with a kick does a super and you also cancel the medium shoryu with it, but you also have to make sure that you super cancel on the first hit of the shoryu, otherwise it doesn't get cancelled at all. Damn, that shit sounds really hard, sometimes I struggle to even get the shoryu out after the crouching medium kick and now you want me to get two quarter circles forward out after? And I've only got 14 frames, about a quarter of a second, to cancel it so that I don't end up pressing on the second hit where I'm counted as airborne, which is why it can't cancel. That might sound like a lot of time to some of you Fortnite zoomers, but even as someone who's so dedicated to fighting games that they've decided that they're going to marry their copy of Guilty Gear XR, the fastest I can physically manage to get a double quarter circle forward out is 17 frames. So how am I doing it here? I'll give you a hint. I'm not. The motion I'm actually doing here is crouching medium kick into medium shoryu, which is the Z motion, into another Z motion, into kick. Now, you might have noticed, that's not even fucking slightly how you do super. The reason that this is possible is because of the way that the game is checking for motion inputs. It's reading every single input within a certain time frame, so you do the shoryu and it reads, okay, I've got a count of these inputs in this order, so let's do a shoryu. Fantastic, nothing complicated. Then, you want to do a super, but the whole thing is only feasible if you're some kind of Shaolin monk who's practicing left wrist motions all day. However, you know that the game is reading inputs up to a certain point, and it's decently lenient. You just need to get those inputs in before the second hit goes through. The game doesn't clear the input history once one move goes through. Those inputs are still kind of in the bank of memory. So you do another Z motion, and the game recounts, and we've got two forwards, two downs, two down forwards. They're not entirely in the right order for a super, but it's close enough. Congratulations, you just paid for a £500 combo with Play-Doh coins. This could have been easily programmed out, but it's not because it feels fucking amazing and contributes to that feeling of system freedom. With all that said, how long does it take to learn this kind of combo? Because if I asked you to do it right here and now without any prior experience, some of you who've also decided that sexual partners are a myth might be able to do it first try. But for people struggling to pull out a Hadouken, I can't even really expect you to get it down once within the first 10 minutes. This presents a problem where only the people who have invested a decent amount of time into the game can get any of the satisfaction out of its systems. So many game developers set out to create more immediately engaging combo systems, or just new ways of doing it without demanding a lot from the player. This is fun, but you have to know how to cook the combo meal in order to enjoy it. After a long day of work, sometimes I just want to slam something in the microwave and ingest an edible heart attack. So fighting games started to look at different approaches on keeping your monkey brain engaged and create some satisfaction without asking you to study your basic shapes beforehand. Tekken and Soul Calibur and every other 3D fighter had a great idea back in the day. How about instead of making a combo super ground focused, you make it more air driven, and the satisfaction comes from how long you can keep your opponent in the air, as opposed to how much you can break down a system. One of the major benefits of a system like this is how immediately understandable a combo works. You see your big dumb man in the air, and you yearn for the days that your life bar was a little bit more blue, and without knowledge of the systems, you still understand how it works. They hit that big move, and suddenly I couldn't do anything. I should also try and hit hit my big move and do the same. You're playing Street Fighter 3 and you go, why the fuck does my little kick never end up doing that? Juggle systems are very learnable through observation, whereas special cancels and links are more systems that you have to learn through education and experience. Tekken also decided to lean a lot less on motion inputs and instead lean more into command inputs and strings, probably because doing motion inputs on a pad just feels downright eldritch in its level of discomfort. Both the juggles and the input system create some hefty benefits and drawbacks that creates the nuance that we call preference 
difference. Something that the YouTube comments have made me believe most of you don't understand. With a string system, you're able to cram more moves into a controller without the execution confusion of motion inputs. However, because moves are easier to input, you can't give them insane properties. So as a replacement, games that went by command inputs often have a ton of moves, in part because a lot of them were 3D and it's easier to animate their moves, but also to make it so that you feel like you have more choice in how you can use your character. When the list of inputs gets too long, because the string system allows the developer to make a ton of different moves, you get command lists longer than the Lord of the Rings books. This leads to the player having to remember a lot, which can be rewarding in its own right, but an issue when you want to make the game a faster to learn experience, or lead to overchoice, where the player is more likely to make choices that they don't understand because there's too many options or they stop making decisions entirely. Often this manifests as mashing, which is exactly the system it is trying to work away from. Either way, this ends up leading to making the satisfying combos become the ones where you keep your opponent in the air for a really long time, rather than giving the player that kinetic boundary break appeal of the fighting games that focus more on cancels. At an even more simple level, most strings combo into themselves, so even if you don't understand how to get into a juggle, you can still have a feeling of control from learning 1-1-2. One, one, oh, very good, I am now JDCR. Combo complexity starts to come from your understanding of how you can use your wide and expansive tool set to get extra hits in, or where you can cut off one of your choices to make for extra hits elsewhere. And even so, my favourite combo in Tekken is also motion input focused, and it isn't in Tekken 3, it's in Tekken 7. Now, for the sake of time, I don't want to go through the whole combo, but I do want to briefly talk about this section at the start. This motion here puts you into a crouch dash, which is a state that has some unique moves to it and can be held for a small amount of time to extend the length of the dash. You have to delay your input here to make sure that you get the dash instead of just holding crouch into nothing. You have to delay your input on the button during the dash to go far enough to connect to your opponent. You have to do another delay here depending on how much you delayed your input here. This makes a portion of the combo satisfying in the same way that a link feels good, in the sense that it's all about timing. I still hate links though, nothing has changed in the 4 to 6, I'm not entirely sure, minutes since I said that. So why do I like the timing element here, but I dislike it here? Personally, when I drop a link by pressing too early, it feels awful to be stood there and nothing comes out pressing it too late and suddenly I'm on someone's block when I thought that I was going to have them in a knockdown situation. You miss a link and you're at disadvantage. You miss part of the timing for a juggle however, and you certainly don't feel good, but it's more that missing part of the juggle stops your potential for greater reward rather than putting you at disadvantage. Timing systems for juggles specifically almost never put you in a position where you're being punished for making a mistake, merely just not given as large of an advantage. I feel that this helps to give the player a greater sense of control, not by making you feel like a god gamer on stoppable sigma, but by not allowing you to lean into the negativity bias of failure. But let's say in theory that you did want to feel like a god gamer, supersonic, discord daddy, whatever I just said. How about a combo system that attempts to provide more of the satisfaction that's closer to the vague genre of action game? Seriously, trying to say that Devil May Cry, Vanquish, Borderlands, and Yakuza all belong in the same category of games is like trying to argue that shrimp, a can of beans, coke, and a billionaire all belong in the same sandwich because they're all edible. I'm talking specifically about games like Metal Gear Rising or Streets of Rage, you know, games where you either punch man or slice man. You ever notice how in like Devil May Cry you just kind of go from swords to guns and guns to sword without ever feeling stilted or weird? That's because you're going to be cancelling the end lag of every single move with the startup of another one. It creates a very immediate sense of strength, but it allows you to ebb and flow between all of these moves without necessarily understanding how exactly you're doing it. Compare that to the fighting games that we've already talked about about, if you want to get from one move to the next, you have to try and time your button presses to the ending of the other move that's come before it. This results in some pretty poor initial game feel for the people that aren't going to invest a decent amount of time into the characters, or don't already understand that this is a concept that the game works by. So some games decided to try and take a page out of more traditional game feel systems and allow the player to just cancel almost everything. Wanna go from light to heavy? Medium to heavy? Kick to dust? B to D? Heavy to light? Well, depending on the game, you can. Since the fighting game community decided decided that we want to have our own special 4chan language, this goes by a couple of names, aka far too many names. Marvel vs Capcom, that's a magic series. Guilty Gear, that's a Gatling. Uni, passing Link, going backwards in Melty, that's a reverse beat. Skullgirls, it's just called fucking cancels, like all the rest of them should be. Oh, but I need to specify when you can go backwards, then just say cancel from heavy to light. I feel like making unique words for cancel, just because it's ever so slightly different, is a bad way to communicate, and makes getting into new games a 
language fever dream because you can't understand what any of this means just by observing the conversation. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a list of tasks that I've completed. This cancel system gives the player a more immediate sense of control by allowing the player to feel like they can naturally go from point A to point B in the combat system. But as a result, combos normally ended up getting impacted in pretty significant ways. While Sasquatch might be able to play with just holding down on the fight stick and collapsing to the right in order to make some pretty decent combos, I'd agree with you if you were to make the observation that this is not a compelling combo to work with. So games like Guilty Gear XR and XX and not Strive, this isn't slightly how Strive works at all, have cancels where just going from P to H hardly do any damage, but will normally combo. However, since this doesn't get you very far, a lot of the characters are technically quickly accessible, but were given very large amounts of individuality in the combo routes. Every character can try and do this, but when Venom actually wants to start doing damage, he combos a lot with air dashes and X art and this ball set and plus R. Bedman wants to start most of his combos with the crouching H variations. Kai ideally wants to hit a special that also ends up counter hitting. Going from a character that basically doesn't use the Gatlings like Coom for their main combo loop, to Venom who's going to be constantly using the slash heavy dust cancel all the time makes them feel very different. And once you get more involved with the game, many of the simple combos are intended to be discarded. If we look at the way that heavy slashes are designed, they almost never provide a knockdown or put you in a position of cycling power. However, simple combos that cause you to skip over the linear nature of the cancel, like going from crouching K to crouching dust, normally leave you at a point where you're able to start getting a cycle going. Since combos at an input level became easier to perform, they either had to get more complicated from the perspective of outcome or get more complicated in ways that weren't related to the moves individually. Some of that comes from understanding special cancels, some of it comes from understanding what can be jump cancelled, some of it comes from knowing where you can delay the cancel system in order to move the opponent in specific ways. Alright, that's all well and good, but what's stopping someone from just doing this over and over and over? A lot of games get around this with tech outs like Guilty Gear or infinite prevention systems like Skullgirls, or some games just... Don't. The important part is that unlike a standard juggle, the game often put more systems in place that makes the combos less suffocating. As cancels created a more immediate sense of control, it also opened the door for the game to be broken in more ways. So the game had to fight against the player who's comboing to make sure that they didn't TOD someone from simple openers. Since a broken game is only satisfying for one person, after all there's a second player here who also needs to be entertained, combos had to become complex in ways that weren't related to simple, exploitable structures. You're not going to find the same satisfaction from from slash slash dust in XR the way that you find pleasure from medium medium heavy in Ultra 4. One's the basic system of how the game works and the other one's a challenge that requires you to achieve some level of mastery. So combos have to find some point of unique challenge or at the very least need to be a bit longer since natural combos are already going to be hitting three to four moves without the intervention of any difficulty. For as much as this is one of the benefits of a more open cancel system and creating for more complex combos it kind of acts as a contradiction to the whole point that the game implemented them in the first place, since most games aren't willing to make simple cancels become effective combos. As a result of the intervention of anti-infinite systems alongside more freeform cancel structure, a lot of games that have normal cancelling have very little similarity between them in the ideas on what combos should look like. Even inside of the same game, characters are going to be unrelated in the combo structure or the skills that they emphasise. One of my favourite B&Bs inside of this very large system that has very little relation between games would be a Venom B&B, of course, and it's this one specifically. What I like about this is just how simple it seems on the surface. It's a cancel into another cancel into another cancel. Who cares? But there's a lot of points that are surprisingly hard to hit that require training on their own in order to come together. This instant air dash right here feels very bizarre because the hit stop requires you to modify the usual timing that you'd have for an up forward forward that you'd normally go for. This dust right here requires you to delay the dust in order to make sure that you land super close to the ground so that when you do a micro dash your opponent is still close enough to get caught by the third Gatling. You then have to delay the last dust so that this forward heavy connects and then can be cancelled into ball set K where you open up the opportunity to do it all over again. It's super hard, incorporates some elements of good movement and timing, and keeps my goblin fighting game virgin brain thoroughly satisfied and I almost never use it. That's not because it's so hard that it's not a viable option, but because in a real match, I'm prone to shakes. Once I'm in the heat of the moment, I combo with all of the grace of a 50-year-old Englishman outside of the pub blacking out into his own vomit. I just can't keep it together. If I'm in a real match, I go for this much smaller, simple combo, and it's a little bit satisfying because of the special cancel, but more importantly, it lets me get to the point that my whole character revolves around without me having to panic about having the most excellent timing and knowing the most 
most minor changes that I need to make depending on character weight. What I like more about the optimal BNB is that this is an option for Venom, but not a requirement to play well. However, when you see the difference in combo damage between these two, I wouldn't blame you for just wanting to constantly go for the big combo that you'll probably never hit because you're panicking. When you're on the receiving end of big damage, it's pretty standard to feel like you're falling behind if you're not able to do the really big flashy combos that the systems allow for. But that's not the case at all. The important part is that a combo allows you to take your advantage and keep putting yourself in positions of advantage. That's not what you're going to see though unless you already know how these games work, which might be why it's common to see people see their health bar drop like it's an elephant from the Eiffel Tower and go, okay, well that's what I need to be doing, this game's going to be about who has the biggest combo. Some games like Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, yeah, combos are pretty damn vital, and if you don't know your touch of deaths, you're going to be throwing away a lot of potential. But most fighting games don't require you to sit in training mode for hours on end to get a good enough bread and butter going to start enjoying the game. Yes, some people do love making the white walls of training mode stain a creamy yellow from jerking themselves off over massively difficult combos, but a lot of us just don't care. There's a reason why bread and butter combo guides do so well. Most of us don't want to spend our time fucking around in training mode trying to figure out how we can combo in a way that keeps us at advantage. People still like combos. Even as someone that's so training mode phobic you could assume that I've managed to find a new form of bigotry, I still like them. But the idea that most fighting games are largely about spending time in training mode mashing out combos is pretty massively false, even if they are a pretty large component of what makes the game work and feel unique. With that said though, I can see why people would be put off when this comes around. Even as someone that gets fighting games, when I see bread and butter listings that look like this, oh my fucking god, I'm put off pretty hard, and it's why I don't understand when people shit their pants when auto combos get brought into their games. They help players get into the game and feel like they don't need to start learning a set of instructions to get damage out of their character. In some instances, they can even expand how the game is enjoyable at a higher level of play. Now I don't really play it much, but- Holy shit, are we gonna talk about Persona? Let's no, go! No, just Shadow mentioning Lakers, it in passing go. leave. Persona has a couple of characters where auto combos become the opening and expanding points for combos. This means that not only can you mash A like a child having a sugar induced seizure on the stick and feel like you're doing the right thing, but you can also take that mindless auto combo and use it to develop some intentionality. It creates a jumping off point for someone to work from, rather than just throwing them in and going, what the fuck is happening? Why does my character punch like a deflated Michelin man? What the fuck is that? And it's not like auto combos end up ever being super strong. It's like completely Complaining about the Needler in Halo, yeah, I can see why you don't like how it's homing and it goes against your idea of what skills are involved in the game, but as someone that knows how to play, how often do you use it? Yeah, that's right. Almost never, because you know how to play the game and get proper flexibility and success out of the other weapons. That's auto combos. You're crying over the Needler. Stop being a bitch. Auto combos, cancels, juggles, links, tech outs, all of it is there just to apply preference in how the game feels. And they all feel very different. And while I can sit here and lay out all of these different systems one by one in video format, all of these cause alterations to game feel. And that can only truly be experienced by you, the player. So go out there and try as many different fighting games as you can until you find a combo system that's for you. Maybe you've already found it, and it's Smash, in which case we, we are sworn enemies. But we've got a ton of games out there. I'm sure there's something out there for someone who thinks that they don't like combos. And if you don't want to drain your money on Steam games looking for it, you could always look towards the 90% of the genre that's locked behind emulation. Charlie oh god, it's the legal grey area police. Don't come in here, I want to see a permit. Everyone scram, video is over. You're going to be under the arrest for still playing Revelator and not enjoying Strive. And how you plead? I don't. I already know how police investigations work. What the fuck's going on?